Lord be with you. And also with you. I have a letter from Pastor Pollock which I would like to read. It answers the questions that you've already been asking and know almost all the answers to, but he said to me by telephone, if I write it down, this is the official word. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you may recall that last week I told you I would be having a stress test on Monday, June 16. I took the test without any problem as far as I could tell. However, on Tuesday, June 17, I received a phone call at lunch that the pictures indicated I had a narrowing of the artery or vein in the lower right section of my heart, and I had been scheduled to have a heart cath on Friday, June 20, and 2 p.m. I underwent the procedure, and it turns out that none of my arteries or veins are blocked, and that it was a shadow on the picture that gave the impression there was a narrowing and a possible need for a stent. All thanks to God and the healing hand of our Good Shepherd for the good news. The entire situation turned out better than I had even hoped. Due to the procedure, I was told that I could not leave you in worship today, so my deepest and sincere thanks to Dr. Thorson for agreeing to be my replacement today on such short notice. You know, I should stop and pant a little bit at that. <laughs> Please welcome him and show him your appreciation for taking up the challenge. As the old saying goes, Lord willing, the crypt don't rise, I will see you next Sunday. <coughs> May the blessing of our resurrected Lord be with you all in Christ at the top. Does anyone have any other uh, news or announcements? And I have one. Uh, please uh, welcome into the fellowship of St. John's, uh, Mr. David DePriest, uh, right here, who was uh, baptized into the body of Christ on Wednesday of this week by Pastor Pollock. So, welcome. <laughs> And since one of our texts talks about being baptized into the uh, death and resurrection of Christ, I'm, and this is very important, so thank you, David. Pastor? Yes, ma'am. I have a short announcement. Um, next Sunday at 9.30, Gus Singleton downstairs in the fellowship room will be giving a uh, joint Sunday school class lesson using his ever-famous puppets. And so... Uh, Please show up at 9 30. We will be conducting a special Sunday school lesson. Thank you. Anyone else? I, I left at the altar. I didn't receive an extra announcement that was in the bulletin. There will be <coughs> next Sunday, if I have the date right, um, a, an open, uh, uh, basically a service at the park. Uh, including uh, an open choir for anyone who wants to join in a community service and uh, celebration of the song. I'll say it again whenever we get the details, but I think it's next Sunday. Kind of an extra in the arts thing. Please, let's join in our normal order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. In the presence of God and of one another, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are captives to sin and we cannot free ourselves. We have, we have sinned against you, God, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done. We have not loved you as our Lord, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. 
as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by His authority. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. You're watching us on YouTube. Please, as you are watching this, think about others who could watch this on your computer. Spread the gospel. We hope that you will come to our 1030 service in person. This is the second Sunday after Pentecost. It's an ancient hymn written in the 1700s. We plow the fields and scatter. We are plowing the fields. We're scattering the seed. YouTube is one of the ways we're serving others. Our minister is Dr. Timothy Thorson.
to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count costs, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do the will, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Dr. Sally Abbott will give the first reading. The first reading for today is for Sunday, June 22nd, 2014, the second Sunday after Pentecost. We're thankful for Pastor Pollock's healing, and I have one announcement that Russell Mittman is in the emergency room tonight, so I have to throw the heart away. That's fine. Russ and Laura's not here today, so we ask for prayers today for Russ and Virtue in Christ's Thanksgiving. The past Pollock is healed of the malaria in his heart. And that's, that's wonderful. But our first lesson, the first reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 20, verses 7 through 13. O oh Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me. But whenever I speak, I must cry out, I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire. I must cry out. I say, I will not mention him, and I speak his name, and then there's the burning fire within me, and shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot, for I hear many whispering. Terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him, and take our revenge on him. The Lord is within me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for you I have, comm I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Joe Brewer will sing the song. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach and shame has covered my Thank you. 
Molly will give the second reading. The second reading is from Romans chapter 6, verses 1b through 11. Should we continue to sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who die to sin go on living in it? Do, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? I, therefore, who have been buried with him by baptism with death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the unison of life. For we have been united with him in a death like his. We will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self is crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe we will also live with him. We believe we will also live with him. We know Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer will have dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But his life, he lives. He lives to God. So you must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Pastor Pollock. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 10 beginning with verse 24. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those in his household? So have no fear of them. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, nothing secret that will not become known. But I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a soul. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. Those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. Christ.
We're honored to have Joe Malone and Dr. Tim Thorson giving our special music, St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. It's June the 22nd, 2014, second Sunday after Pentecost.
But God sometimes who surprises us by giving exactly what we ask for. Be careful. Take a look at what the prophet says when he got what he wanted. Our opening lines, you know, anytime something goes wrong, we look for somebody to blame. It's really nice when we can say either, my wife made me do it, or the devil made me do it. And for some guys, I know that's the same thing. You know. <laughs> and what does Jeremiah the prophet say? God made me do it. Oops. But what is it that he is complaining about if he got what he wanted? He's saying that he is just simply overwhelmed and full and about to just explode with messages that he cannot stop speaking. He's got something to share. He's got something that he wants his neighbors, his friends, his family to hear. <coughs> They're tired of the story. And, you know, we all do that. <clears throat> I saw him coming, so I'm going to go up the other aisle. We go around, you know, I, I take walks, uh, I live in town, and I walk off and on north and south Broadmoor, and there are all these dog walkers. I get tired of meeting dogs. I go on the other side. Well, sometimes it's not action, sometimes it's, uh, I have a suspicion that some of you have been in committee meetings, even in church, and the chair or the president of the committee, or maybe even the pastor is saying, uh, you volunteer, and all of you find the table so interesting. <laughs> you don't want to step up and get involved in the sharing. Of course, you can do what my great uncle, I don't know what his relationship really was, he was sort of shirt string, uh, or whatever that phrase is about relationship, um, cousin to my grandparents or something like that. Uh, but he was a storyteller. Well, his wife after church used to just stand by the door and just patiently wait like this. Because Marvin wasn't done telling his stories yet. He still had to repeat a few of them. And he had a line that I learned to hear a few times. If you haven't heard this before, stop me. And then I read the story that I'd already heard five times. <laughs> but you know, there are people that do signal, and we do what is coming, and it can be either bad or good. I tell you about two phone calls from my daughters. When my youngest calls, it's not necessarily good news. Actually, we have the joke in my family, no news is good news. Because when I pick up the phone, it's, I'm dead. I'm in for it. Whatever it is, she doesn't have to say anything other than her voice communicates it all. How about if there's good news? Now, my middle daughter does not believe me when I tell this, and I have a number of times. She and her husband were without children for the first 10 years of their marriage, and I got a phone call. I knew it was a phone I knew exactly what was coming. She didn't believe me. Hi, Dad. I knew what the message was. I'm pregnant. I said, I know. How do you know? Well, dads know. But beyond that, the message in her voice alone communicated that she had something to share. And that's where Paul is. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, says, I've got something to share. I mean, I, just let me tell my story because, you know, Christ is been crucified and resurrected and we have been through baptism buried with him and raised with him and how can you not speak up? Yeah, I know there are some people who don't want to hear that. I know there are people who don't want to put up with a change in their lives. People who don't want to put up with, well, who knows whatever the consequences are. And Jesus understood that perfectly well. Actually, much of the gospel is a bit of a downer. 
take it out of context. People are not going to like what you say or hear. People are going to want to turn you off, the way I do with the telemarketers. If there's a long pause on the other end of the line, don't, you know, that's all they need to hear. But if you are really sharing something, if you have something that has changed your life, if, if you are baptized, your life is different, you have something to share. Now, we don't all easily fit that and deal with the consequences. And I remember when I was brand new pastor, I'd just been ordained, and three days later I was installed as a pastor in my first pair of congregations in West Central Minnesota. The installation service was all over, and I knew it was my turn. I had to say something. Stepped to the front, stepped to the chancel, and all I said was, I'm your pastor now. Now, I didn't say it to them. There were some jitters and giggles in the audience. I said, I was different. I had to accept being different. I had a new responsibility. But that's who I was now. Kind of like when, you know, former President Bush jumps out of his airplane for his 75th and 80th and 85th and now his 90th birthdays. Once you're out the door, you better hope the parachute opens because there's no turning back.
That's what Jesus is talking about. Yeah, there are going to be consequences. You can't help that. Joe Sam. The kind of song that we need to hear as accompanying these texts. All we have to remember is that the precious Lord is holding our hand and helping us walk through the need. All of those things that some people don't want to hear as consequences in the way. But for those who have been baptized into the death and resurrection, provide a goal, a reason, and a purpose. And I now use the word purpose on my purpose. Quite a number of years ago, I was asked, and I was then, I don't even remember what I was doing in the setting, but I was asked, because retirement came up in the conversation, uh, what does retirement mean for you? And I thought for a minute, and said, the next stage of purposeful living. Well, a few stages later, I'm now asking, so what is the purpose? Where do I go from here? Retired or not? But then I take comfort. In that prophet who said, you know, God, you did this. In Paul who said, what are you worried about? And Jesus who said, just let God enter into that commandment fellowship. It's okay. Come on. Are you ready for the future? And ready to share what is in your hearts and minds and maybe even change your lives? It's before us. And you've been doing it. Walk with God, guys. For the sake of Jesus, who showed us how. Great is Thy Faithfulness was written by Thomas Chisholm, who was born in a cabin in Kentucky. He wrote thousands of hymns. His hymns were picked up by the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. George Beverly Shea sang his hymns. This is one of his great hymns written in 1923, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Ushers are coming forward for the offering. This is St. John's Lutheran Church, June the 22nd, 2014, the second Sunday after Pentecost. The special hymn that you heard today, which was sung uh, by Jim Lon and was accompanied by our guest pastor, Dr. Tim Thorson, is Precious Lord, Take My Hand. It was written by Thomas Dorsey. It's not the Thomas Dorsey we know the musician, but this was George Tom Dorsey, who wrote blues music. He was converted to the National Baptist Convention in Chicago in 1923. He then turned to writing gospel music. He had to buy, borrow five dollars to get his gospel music published. He wrote this great hymn, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, after he learned of the death of his wife and baby. He went to the piano. He was moved by God. He played, composed this song, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, in response to this news that his wife, Nettie, was dead. He arrived home learned that the baby boy had also died. Turned this song over to God. Now we have the precious song, Precious Lord Take My Hand. Georgia Tom Dorsey, written in 1932, the black pastor. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we stop the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord look on you with favor and ever smile graciously as he extends that precious hand. And may he walk with you all your days until he calls you to be his own. This song, Day by Day, was written by Carolina Sandelberg. It's called the Fanny Crosby of Scandinavia, Swedish songwriter, daughter of a Lutheran pastor. She was on a ship with him. She watched him being swept overboard and drowned in front of her eyes. This stimulated her to write this wonderful hymn, Day by Day, her hymn of faith, God is still with her. It is God is with us. That is our theme today. St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. Join us for worship any Sunday, 10.30, or the drive-in service at 8 o'clock, Melody Cruise Inn. inspired by a hymn written by a medieval knight. other people how to click us up on the computer. Listen to us anytime. This is our Sunday broadcast, 22nd of June, 2nd Sunday of Pentecost. Our last hymn was Day by Day, inspired by the uh, precious Lord who is with Carolina Sandelberg after the death of her father. Read the words, you'll understand that how she felt day by day, the Lord is with her. Tune in anytime. Thank you for joining our worship service. We hope and we pray that God will continue to bless and to keep you this day and all your days. We pray for you. Continue to pray for us and support our ministry on YouTube.